Okay guys, uh, I mentioned this a little while ago. I was going to try and show you something that I do with uh, installing this Tunic 4 or any Tunic thermal paste for that matter. I'm not sure you can really call it a paste. Uh, I mean it's, uh, it's thick. It's almost like Play-Doh in my opinion. But uh, anyways, I thought I'd do a little arts and crafts type of thing here to, uh, to show you how I do this uh, with, some, with some success uh, in my temps. Um, over the last build, I've actually used uh, two other Tims. One is the MX-4 and the other is the Arctic Silver 5. So um, th th this installation of the tunic is going to be the first time I've installed it on this build. And uh, I'm curious to see what I'm going to get as a, a max load temp. When I uh, when I run some benchmarks uh, with the MX4, I was maxing out at 56 degrees Celsius on the CPU, and with the uh, Arctic Silver 5, go figure, it was up to 62 degrees Celsius. It's not as good a paste, and um, I'm really curious as to how this uh, tunic is going to fare in comparison to that, especially the MX4, which is a, it was a very good paste as well. So, anyways, uh, on with it. Uh, what you're looking at here is quite simply a very generic way of putting paper and tape on a table. Um, the theory behind this, which is why I do it this way, is that I'm basically looking to get the thermal paste spread out and as flat and even as possible and with the correct thickness. So what I did is I basically took the, uh, I, what I do is I, take, I took the packaging out of this guy, which is what the, the tube came in. I cut it up, I just put two strips down on either side, took some masking tape, put a piece of masking tape here, a piece of masking tape here, kind of closed it off a bit. But anyways, the idea is that that, that, le that level of thickness from the tabletop to the top of this is going to be uniform and about 0 0.03 of a millimeter, or 0 0.3 of a millimeter, which is, uh, by my own personal experimentation, uh, that gives me some top-notch um, some uh, cooling with that type of thickness. So anyways, on to it. So um, after I put down the tape and the uh, little strips of cardboard that kind of give me that thickness that I want, uh, I use parchment paper. Not wax paper, not, not anything else, parchment paper. And you basically put it down right there, tape it into place, and then you have the bottom base. So really what you're gonna, if, you, if you're kind of following what I'm doing here, um, this is almost like creating a mini thermal pad, but the thermal pad is going to be using this uh, tunic 4 instead of just a generic piece of thermal pad that's, you know, 0.5 of a millimeter or 1 millimeter, whatever it ends it ended up being. But um, essentially that's the way it works. So you just, uh, what I do is, well, the other thing I did is uh, this stuff is so thick, don't even torture yourself with trying to squeeze it out through that little tiny tube piece at the end. Just cut the whole thing off clean off the first little bit of thermal paste to make sure you don't have any debris in there and then just uh, you know what you're gonna waste a bit and I'll, I'll say that right now look at this so it doesn't even stick to the the pat the uh, the parchment paper anyway like I said you're gonna waste a little bit doing this the way this way but essentially that's what uh, that's what I'm looking to do and then on top of that I want to, uh, you know what, I'm just going to waste a bit more because I want to make sure I get this right on one try. Uh, okay. There. There. So anyways, there you go. And then you take a second piece of uh, parchment paper, throw it down, tape it down, and now you're just going to roll it out like a piece of cookie dough. Now I'm just using my... Uh, my water bottle here because it's the most brown thing I have in the house. All my cups are uh, oval to some degree. So anyway, it's not going to work. So anyways, you can tell what I'm doing basically, kind of physics in some degree. The, the thicknesses of the uh, paper and whatnot are kind of managing the thickness for me. I'm, I'm being mindful to stay on that. You can see that it's spreading out now. The reason I kind of thought about doing this in the first place is uh, unfortunately when I first installed this paste I did the whole thing where you know people said just uh, you know just uh, put put a dollop in the middle and let your um, let your heat there your um, your CPU cooler kind of smash things down in place and uh, 
it didn't work. Like it was so thick, I couldn't squeeze it into place. And not only that, I ended up bending the four corners of my CPU cooler because um, there was so much pressure required. Like I can't tell you how much I'm putting on it right now while you're just watching it, but I'm like putting all my weight on this thing just so I can get like this thing as thin and as flat as possible. So no, go figure the CPU cooler bent the, uh, four, the four corners just trying to squeeze this down enough. Um, and I could tell that it wasn't squeezed down enough because the temperatures were awful. So it was just a bad experience installing it in that regard. I mean, you could use this gizmo here if you really like to. I mean, you follow the instructions, you kind of uh, play along and uh, maybe, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Um, I just find this little bit of effort here is a lot less, uh, this is a bit of a, you know, a pain to me. It doesn't spread like you think it does, um, or like I think it does, and uh, so I don't, uh, I don't use it. We're almost there. You can tell because I've done this so many times with that much thermal paste that that's pretty much what I'm going to get, which is pretty good because the the dye is going to be. You know, I'm going to nip off like a little bit there, a little bit at the bottom, a little bit on that side to make it as square as possible so that it, uh, you know, it's going to, uh, cover the whole CPU die as best as I can get it and then, uh, install it. So there you kind of have it. So what I do now is I take, uh, the whole, uh, what really has become my uh, my thermal pad, and I just uh, do that, cut it up, so I can install it, and then really, I'm not sure, I don't want to tear this back too much because the way you kind of got it, let, pretty much like one or two shots at this, but it. Uh, it will let go of the thermal paste, the, the, the parchment paper, once you peel it back. So you peel back one side, place it down on the CPU, then you peel back the top side, put your heat sink on, and you go from there. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do a few more things to the computer this afternoon, which is why I'm doing this one, and uh, show you what, I'm, uh, what, uh, what the results are of this are gonna be. I mean, you can kinda, I don't know if you can tell or not, but boy, that's thin. And uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So happy about that. Um, that's garbage now. I'll uh, get rid of all this gizmo stuff because it's not necessary. And um, you know what? We'll see how this all works out. Um, like I said, we're uh, we're targeting 56 Celsius from the MX4 and 62 from the Arctic Silver 5. Uh, I did install them in a few different patterns. You know, the X pattern, the the P pattern, the grain of rice, all that kind of fun stuff. So they were all installed using different uh, patterns and whatnot. So, you know, I, uh, the, the, the 56 for the MX4 and the 62 for the Arctic Silver 5 are, uh, were pretty consistent across the different patterns I've used over the last, you know, 12 months or so. So anyway, that's it for me. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll chime back in. This is going to be part one of part two, just to let you know. So part two will be the actual results. Thanks, guys.